Football is beautiful, but it can also be hilarious and just straight up incredible. De Cristiano! There are some football related stories that you will hear that will have your mouth open for minutes, wondering how on earth that happened. And well, those are the kinds of stories we will be telling in this video today. And believe it or not, every single thing we'll be telling you happened for real. You may think many of them are really hard to believe, but they really did happen. For example, how easy is it to believe that a coach got to manage a team for only 10 minutes before being sacked? What? Well, it happened for real. Leroy Rossinia, who once played for Fulham and West Ham and is now a football pundit with Sky Sports, was hired to coach Torquay United and was sacked just 10 minutes later. Crazy, right? Well, here's what happened. At the same time Leroy was being hired, the club was also being sold. So the new owner apparently didn't want Leroy as coach, so he sacked him and hired Paul Buckle. But just 10 minutes? Come on! But while one manager was getting sacked, another was getting sold. And wait for it, by himself. Ivor Broadis was the player manager of Carlisle United and being just 23 years old, he was the youngest ever player manager at the time. Things were going well during his time there until the club's finances took a major hit. So being the leader in the dressing room, Broadis decided to sacrifice himself to save the club. He sold himself to Sunderland for £18,000 and really helped boost Carlisle's finances. Who doesn't love a sacrificial leader and friend? Well, maybe Sven Joran Eriksson because when one of his players, Stephen Ireland, made a big sacrifice to be with his girlfriend who was lonely, they didn't like it one bit. He even publicly called him stupid. Ireland was on international duty with Ireland, but his lonely girlfriend who was in another city was his priority. So he made up an excuse for the manager so he could go see his girlfriend. And what was that excuse? That his grandmother was dead and he had to go make arrangements for the funeral. Well, of course they found out his grandmother wasn't really dead. So Ireland apologised to both his national team and his club and explained why he gave that excuse. We just hope he also apologised to his grandmother. Well, at least thankfully. Ireland's grandma was not actually dead, but sadly, the same could not be said for Luciano Ricciacconi, who lost his life because of a one-line joke. The former Lazio defender who was with the Italian squad at the 1974 World Cup was known for his sense of humour. He was always the life and soul of the party. And on the 18th of January 1977, when he went to his friend's jewellery store in Rome, he made the most expensive joke of his life. He walked into the shop and said loudly, Stop! This is a robbery! And before he could say, Psych! He had already been shot dead. Obviously, it was only a joke, but Luciano didn't live to explain it. However, here's something that surely isn't a joke, but does seem like one. 41 penalties taken during a shootout. You think that the United vs Villarreal shootout in the Europa League final last season went on for too long? Then you definitely didn't see the Juventud Alianza vs General Paz Juniors game in the Argentinian 4th division. Those guys were playing penalties back and forth for more than an hour after playing an aggregate of 3-3 over both legs. The game had to be decided on penalties and it seemed like neither of them wanted to give it up. Almost every player from both teams took two penalties. It seemed like it would never end. Perhaps Gonzalez, Juventud Alianza's goalkeeper, got tired of the loop and just decided to end his misery by missing his second penalty. That was the only penalty missed of the whole 41 taken. So was it that the players were that good at penalties? Or were the keepers just so bad? Hey there, it seems like you're enjoying this video. Come on, go ahead and give it a thumbs up then. Also, subscribe to the channel and turn on the bell notification so you don't miss out on more videos like this. Now back to those really bizarre happenings in football. Quick question, how many yellow cards make a red? Two, right? Well, meet 
Josip Simic of Croatia, who got yellow carded twice in the game and still didn't get sent off. Graham Pohl, who was the officiating referee of that World Cup game between Croatia and Australia, probably showed a yellow card to one player a record three times in the same game before giving him his marching orders. After that game, the referee retired from international football. But Josip though, he was really given a second chance and still went ahead to commit a third foul to earn a real sending off. But here's another Croatian who got a permanent sending off from his club stadium, Dino Drupic. And do you want to guess what Dino did? Well, he was caught having sex in the middle of the club's football pitch. <laughs> okay. All right. The defender, during his time at Dinamo Zagreb, arranged for him and his wife to get busy on the pitch of the Stadion Maximir. Once the Zagreb owners found out about it from an interview Dino's wife did, they immediately put him on the transfer list and made sure he never played a minute of football for the club again. Now, we go from Dinamo Zagreb Stadium to FC Barcelona's. No, no, nobody was caught having sex in the Camp Nou pitch, relax. But have you ever wondered why Barcelona fans are called culés? Here's a hint, culos is a Spanish word which means ass. Figured it out yet? No? Okay, so basically, very many years ago in an old Barcelona stadium, Fans would sit on the walls around the stadium to watch the Barca games. And the way that they sat, you could see their butts when you drove by on the road. So the fans' butts were so memorable at every game that they coined a name for them from it. A name which has stuck for very many years after. Now, here is something else that was sure to stick. Striking the ball 149 times into your own net in a professional game. Yes. 149 own goals in a single professional football game. Okay, yeah, it wasn't scored by just one player, but it was scored by just one team. Stade Olympique de Lemion against AS Adima in the Madagascan Football League. Apparently, this was a form of protest. In the previous game between the two sides, Adima got a late penalty from which they snatched a late draw. And Stade Olympique felt that it was never a penalty. So, as a form of protest in their next meeting, they scored 149 times in their own net. 149 own goals, you know? Did they not think that maybe 15 would have sent the message? Or, okay, even make it around 50 and then walk away. But they went all the way to 149. Nearly two own goals scored in every minute. You just have to respect their sheer determination there. And with that, they also hold the record for the largest margin of defeat ever in professional football. We just hope that this unique form of protest was worth it. Well, here is something that maybe deserved a proper protest. Somebody come and look at this. UT Arad, a second division Romanian club, sold their player Marius Cuara for, wait for it, 15 kilograms of meat. And no, this wasn't centuries or decades ago. It happened in 2006, in the 21st century. Players at his new club taunted Marius relentlessly for this, that he quit the club the very next day after he joined. The Romanian defender would have been well within his rights to protest such a transfer. But on the bright side, being the only one in modern football to be sold for meat, surely Marius Koara can boast of being in a league of his own, just like Garrison Gunners and Woolpark Wanderers. They are literally the entire Isles of Silly Football League alone. Yes, just the two teams. Really incredible, isn't it? So how does it work? Would they invite guests over from other leagues like the Copa America sometimes does, or would they just play twice in the season to determine who tops the league? Um, no, they play each other week in, week out, a total of 17 times in the season. Wow, but at least they get to play against other clubs in cup competitions, right? Wrong. They still face each other in the domestic cup competitions. How very fascinating that league must be. Speaking of interesting, here's something interesting that happened to one of the greatest footballers ever, Ronaldo Nazario. In 2008 in Brazil, Ronaldo solicited the services of some female sex workers, only to get to the hotel and find out that the three prostitutes were actually men. Imagine his shock, and according to him, the men didn't leave until they had ripped him off. Well, there you have it, seemingly unbelievable football-related stories that actually happened. If you liked this video, remember to give it a like, and if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and turn on the bell notification so you don't miss any of our content. Catch you in the next one. Bye.